So in this show, we'll be speaking with Bomani and Yinning, who are part of the ML5.js project that some of our viewers may have heard of before, which uses TensorFlow.js behind the scenes for much of its machine learning functionality. Welcome to you both. And first off, tell us a bit more about who you are. Hey, Jason, thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Bomani. I'm an engineer working and teaching in the art and design context. Uh, I work on software and electronics for artists and musicians. And I also teach physical computing and electronic circuitry at Parsons School of Design. Uh, I also enjoy volunteering as an EMT at health organ related organizations uh, in my neighborhood. Uh, I first joined ML5 uh, at the beginning of 2020. And since then I've primarily been working on maintenance uh, improvements for the library that aim to make uh, ML5.js a bit more approachable for people who are coming from a wide variety of backgrounds. Um, I respond to a lot of the GitHub issues and coordinate releases uh, for the library. I recently bridged in the TensorFlow hand pose and face mesh models. Uh, and uh, I'm also working as part of a group to develop the ML5.js code of conduct and software license, which encourages ethical and friendly uses of the library. Awesome. That's, that's a lot of a lot of work over there. <laughs> Good stuff. And uh, Yining yourself as well. Yes. Uh, thank you for having us, Jason. Hi. Uh, my name is Yining. Uh, I'm a software engineer at a startup um, at a machine learning startup called Runway, uh, and I'm also a lecturer at New York University, where I teach a class that uses MFIJS and the TFJS to create interactive projects in the browser. Uh, I started working in the ML5 research group in 2018. Um, I ported models like st uh, style transfer, picks to picks, uh, doodle classifier from TFJS to ML5.js. Uh, I also run workshops about ML5, uh, ML and uh, creative coding. Uh, I'm very excited to be here to talk about ML5 and I hope it could be one of your tools in your creative process. Please let us know if you have any suggestions or feedback in the comments. Cool. Sounds great. Now, you both mentioned, of course, you're working on ML5. And you know, what exactly does this library do? And how is it different to, say, TensorFlow.js, which maybe more of our audience is familiar with right now? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we typically describe ML5.js as a neighborly approach to creating and exploring artificial intelligence in the browser. Um, to kind of clarify that, ML5.js really aims to make machine learning approachable for a really broad audience of artists, students, educators, creative coders, and many others. Um, the library provides access to machine learning algorithms and models in the browser using TensorFlow.js. Um, and in general, as a community, we really uh, try to encourage you know, ethical and friendly uses of the library that um, are oriented around typically creative and educational use cases. Awesome, that sounds super cool. <laughs> and Yining, you want to add something there as well? Yeah, uh, so like uh, Bomani mentioned, ML5 is inspired by processing and P5.js, whose goal is to encourage people of all interests and uh, all backgrounds to learn how to make creative work with code. And uh, when it comes to machine learning, however, to get started with machine learning, one needs some advanced uh, understanding of math and uh, programming. So we'd like to make this process easier. So machine learning can be something that everyone can learn, understand, and explore freely. Uh, so if you don't have too much experience in machine learning or coding, uh, but would like to use it in your uh, creative process, then ML5.js would be a good tool to, for this. Uh, it provides a lot of learning uh, materials as well. And here are some uh, projects that students made in a class called Machine Learning for the Web. So here you can track your nose position to play games in the browser. Uh, you can dance in front of your webcam uh, with some cool filters. Um, you can also teach a machine to recognize different commands to move your characters in the game. Uh, you can use your voice to play a web game as well. Um, or more interestingly, you can make some smart physical computing objects that can respond to your voice or your gestures. Amazing. I, I love the variety of uh, things going on there from things in the physical space to just pure digital as well. And of course, as you mentioned, you know, 
everyone, no matter what their background, can get stuck into this stuff. And I've seen already on the show Intel, we've had people who are new to programming and new to machine learning, like experimenting with TensorFlow.js, but also ML5 as well. And um, it's great to see anyone being able to make these amazing projects. So uh, really, really interesting stuff. So this is really interesting. I'd love to see some of this in action in terms of the coding side, maybe. So you know, how hard is it to use something like uh, MobileNet in ML5? Yeah, so we can actually use uh, something like MobileNet uh, in ML5 in like three simple steps. At nice. first, we can load load the model in, and uh, then ask the model to either predict something or classify something. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, we do something with the results that we get. Um, yeah, maybe we can do some uh, coding together. Uh, let's good. use <laughs> cool. <laughs> Yeah, let's use a mobile net to classify the images from our webcam. So here I have a P5 web editor opening. Uh, all it does is to get the image from the webcam and uh, draw the video on the canvas. That's all it does. Uh, now I can import the ML5 library, uh, put it into my index.html here. Um, and now I can create a variable called my classifier. This will be my model. Uh, and I will have another variable that holds the result of the model. Uh, so in the setup, a setup is a function in P5. In the setup, we can uh, add first to load this model in. This model is an image classifier whose name is uh, MobileNet. And we will say the input of this model is our video, which is our webcam. Um, and once this model is loaded, we will call a function called uh, model loaded. Um, and once the model is ready, we can ask the model to classify something. Uh, dot classify, and uh, then we will have a, another callback function called got results. Um, this got results function will be called once we have that result. Um, and uh, Got result function takes two parameters. If there's any error happening in the process of classifying things, it, we can throw out this error to console lock this error. Um, yeah. <laughs> and if there is a result, it is one array of all the things that it thinks uh, it's recognized. So we are going to get the first result, which has the highest probability. And the first results label will be whatever this model recognized from our webcam. And uh, the last thing is we just uh, take that label and uh, draw that label uh, on the canvas, use the function called text. Uh, yeah, and now we're all ready. Uh, we can run this sketch. Um, and here I have a coffee mug. Hopefully <laughs> it can recognize a coffee hey, mug here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and then I will try a teapot. Awesome. That's working pretty well. And just like, I think that's uh, around 30 lines of code or so, and you've got a fully working machine learning prototype right there. Very cool. Yeah, we also support uh, async await, but we uh, use callback at, in the example to make it easier for beginners to understand the sure. code. Yeah, that makes sense. I think uh, some of the new syntax in ES6 and so on is like still kind of new for a lot of people. So it's good that you su yeah. support both of those. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so I love how easy that was to get started. Um, what other models do you support in ML5 right now? Yeah, we support a, a really wide variety of models at the moment. Some of the really popular ones that we see people use really often are PoseNet, body pics uh, and our neural network uh, model are a couple of the ones that people enjoy using a lot, but we also have things like sketch RNN, uh, we have pitch detection models, nearest neighbor classification, uh, word to vec. Um, so there's a lot of different options in the library uh, and we're continuing to add more. As I mentioned earlier, we did recently add uh, the face mesh and hand pose models, which allow 3D uh, tracking of many different positions either on the face or on one hand and palm. Um, so we're continuing to kind of consider, you know, adding different features to the library that people can work with. Sure, that makes sense. And I guess just to kind of emphasize the difference there between TensorFlow.js and ML5 is like with your version of face mesh, which is also available in TensorFlow.js, it's just a little bit easier to kind of take a webcam input and use with that rather than having to write all the webcam code yourself and that kind of stuff, right? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we yeah. we just essentially try to make it a little bit simpler. Um, yeah. Most of these models will have a, a couple of different parameters that are preset to just help out with the process of getting it working, and then also have a lot of code there that helps it to work better in the P5.js environment as well. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. And uh, I guess looking towards the future, what's in store for ML5? Uh, yeah, I, in general, uh, we're really focused on continuing to make ML5 more accessible and approachable to beginners uh, and people who have typically been excluded from machine learning communities. And so I think regarding the software side of things, a primary focus for us in the first half of this year, uh, 2021, is continued improvements to the stability and quality of the library. We're really trying to take a prioritized approach to addressing questions, feature requests, and bug fixes from the community, uh, as well as prioritizing and, and improving our workflows for onboarding new contributors, uh, testing, releasing new versions of the library, uh, and so on. Uh, during this period, people who are using ML5 probably can expect to see a lot of GitHub issues being addressed. Um, you'll probably see improvements to the APIs and performance of uh, many of the existing models that we have. And uh, for example, this might actually look like, you know, making improvements to our neural network class or advancing our neural evolution examples, so on and so forth. Uh, on the community side, we recently started a Discord uh, server, which uh, sort of acts as a place for people in the community to convene and to learn with each other, ask each other questions. We'll also be using Medium as a place to share uh, more features of really cool projects that have been made using the library. And we're also working on improving our code of conduct and software license, uh, which encourage you know, positive, ethical, friendly uses of the ML5.js library and sort of sets a standard for how members of the community uh, should treat one another. So uh, right now, we're actually looking for a lot of feedback and suggestions for improvement to our code of conduct and license. And so any viewers of this, you're invited to engage in this topic if you're interested. Um, but again, you know, we're always interested in making the library more approachable to people who are just getting started with coding or just getting started with contributing to open source projects or with the machine learning space. Um, we have a few ideas in store you know, to continue to, to work towards that goal. Uh, but we, again, invite folks to give contributions towards that effort, whether that's in software, whether that's in docs or just, you know, other forms of, sure. you know, community engagement with the project. Excellent. So, we're, yeah, we're, we'll definitely put those links in the description after the show for any of the resources that you just mentioned there yeah. so people can get involved and uh, get stuck into the project. <laughs> Wonderful. So I also hear you're running some educational workshops. Maybe you can tell me more about that. Yeah. So if you're interested in learning more about how to use ML5.js, a good place to start is our website, ml5.js.org. Um, there's also a lot of helpful educational content on the Coding Train platform. Uh, specifically, you can check out the Beginner's Guide to Le Machine Learning in JavaScript with ML5.js playlist. Uh, and also many of the NYU courses using ML5.js have really cool open source curriculums that you can check out uh, if you'd like to learn more. Sounds good. And Yuning, do you have anything to add? Yes. Uh, in the end, I'd like to give a shout out to all the amazing ML5 contributors. Thank you so much for building it with us. Uh, ML5 is a collaborative project created by many people. If you're interested in contributing, please check out our contributor docs on GitHub. And uh, you can contribute in many different ways, including adding uh, new examples, adding documentations, learning materials, and hosting workshops, and many more. That sounds great. And, and thank you both again for being on the show today. It is wonderful to see the amazing projects and how far it's all come. And of course, uh, if you're watching right now, do get involved in the community. Uh, we'd love to see that. So thank you and hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.